Good afternoon, everyone, and I am thankful to all of you for joining the webinar. And I would also like to take this opportunity and thanks IUCEE Virtual Academy for giving me an opportunity to present this webinar. I am going to share the findings of this study, which was conducted at National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research to understand the learning styles of students pursuing their masters in engineering, that is civil engineering, computer science and engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, electronics and communication engineering. The structure of the presentation would include the introduction, the concept and classification of learning styles, objectives of the study, tool used for identifying the learning styles of the students, the major findings of the study and implications for teaching. Now friends, massive expansion of technical education during the last decade has posed many new challenges to the teachers working in the technical education system. The intake capacity of the technical education system has increased leading to increase in the student-teacher ratio and one of the important questions with which all of us as teachers are grappling with is how to cater to the individual differences that exist among the students. Because heterogeneity among the learners has increased over a period of time. And a large number of studies which have been carried out in the area, they clearly point out that among other factors that affect the performance of students is the learning style. When I say other factors, other factors include the intelligence, the aptitude of the learner, the background, the demographic variable of the learner, the gender of the learner, but learning style has been found to be one of the major factors that determine the performance of the student. There are a number of studies which show that if the teaching style of the teacher matches the learning style of the student, then learning can be maximized. Or it has been shown that instructional strategies which are adopted by the teacher and they are as per the requirements of the learning styles of the students in the class, then we can maximize the learning on the part of the learner. So in this context, I am going to deal with, first try to understand, what do we understand by this concept of learning style? There are numerous definitions put forth to clarify the concept of learning styles. Done and done in 1970 tried to I define this learning style as the way in which learner begin to concentrate, process and retain new and difficult information. Now if we try to analyze this definition, three important things emerge from this definition. One is how the learner focuses attention on the incoming information. Second is what processes he adopts to process the incoming information. That means how a learner approaches the task or how a learner approaches the new information. And third important thing which emerges is how the person tries to retain the new information which he has acquired. So how he retains that information over a period of time. Likewise, Cross has also defined learning style, that means the characteristic way the individual uses to collect, organize, and transform, transfer information into useful knowledge. So how the knowledge is constructed by the individual and it also involves how he perceives that information how he tries to organize the information and likewise Gregory and Ward has described learning style as a characteristic set of behavior which describe 
how their minds relate to the world. That means how the person tries to sense the world, gather the information, and then tries to relate it to what he already knows, and then retain that information. Kolb in 1984 gave another definition of the learning style, making it very simple to understand that it is the preferred way the individual deals with given information and how she or he constructs meaning out of the stimuli. So it is based on the constructivist theory that whatever information we gather from the outside world, that we try to give meaning to it by associating or relating that information with what we already know and we try to find out are there any inconsistency in the new information and what we already know and we reflect on that information and then we try to experiment with the new concepts learned. So he has also given an elaborate experiential learning theory which I'll be dealing little after. So in nutshell we can say that learning styles are the preferred ways in which a student processes the information or you can say it is a tip It is connected now. So I'm so sorry because of the connection being lost. I was not able to continue with it. So learning styles have been classified in different ways. Dunn and Dunn in 1970 gave the first classification and Dunn and Dunn identified 21 elements for understanding the situation in which learning takes place. And finally, he tried to classify those 21 elements into five broad categories, which include the environmental conditions. Now, when I say environment, it means where do the learners prefer to learn? Whether they prefer a cool and a quiet place, whether the learners would prefer a warm and noisy place to continue their learning or whether they prefer an environment which is well lit where the temperature is controlled. So this refers to the environmental elements. The second broad factors include the emotional elements. Emotional elements refer to does the learner need motivational support to learn effectively? Will the learner continue to follow through a learning task? That means the task persistence. Can the learner assume individual responsibility for his or her learning? 
does the learner need structure which needs to be there as far as the information is concerned so he requires somebody to structure the information for him so what kind of external support is required by the learner then comes sociological elements sociological elements include does the learner work better alone or whether the learner prefers to work in a group or in a pair or whether the person would like to have authority that means he would like to control what he is learning or whether the person would require uh, a variety that is what it is included in sociological elements the fourth category includes the physiological elements when we refer to physiological elements it means when and how does the learner physically engage most in learning is it through he's an auditory learner is he a visual learner would he prefer to perceive the information through text textual senses that is touch or whether he would prefer the kinesthetic information so whether the person perceives the information through visual auditory or kinesthetic sense or the learner physically engage most in learning that is at what time of the day would like to learn and whether he would prefer any intake during that period or whether he would like to have some kind of mobility or movement so these elements together come under the broad category of physiological elements the fifth broad category includes the psychological elements and here you can see the done and done had tried to classify whether the person is analytic or he is a global kind of a learner that it means whether he would like to go step by step or he would like to take an overview of the thing and grasp whether the person is impulsive or reflective that means whether he jumps to the conclusion immediately gives answer to the questions immediately or reacts to the situation immediately or he ponders upon the incoming information ponders upon the data and the information he reflects he thinks before he indulges into any kind of action or any kind of response and done and done said that all these five elements inter interact among themselves to determine the learning style of the learner another important classification another important classification was given by call according to the call learning is the process whereby knowledge is created through the transformation of experiences he says learning is primarily learning of abstract concepts and when we try to learn the abstract concepts the process passes through four different stages and these stages are concrete experience which refers to that person has a new experience or he does something and he gains a new experience and once a new experience is gained the person tries to review that new experience or he reflects back on the experience and tries to identify the inconsistency between experience and understanding so whatever he has understood and whatever new information has been given to the person he tries to find out is there a match or is there any gap or inconsistency which is there in the new information and what he has already understood 
and the process of reflection gives way to new ideas or abstract conceptualization. So abstract conceptualization means either a person gets a new idea or he modifies what he has already understood and then he tries to indulge into ex active experimentation. When I say active experimentation, that means the person would like to test the new learning in the world and he would apply that new learning and find out whether the results what he expected are there or is it a valid one or not. So learning com is complete when the person has passed through all these four stages of experiential learning cycle that is starts with concrete experience goes to reflective observation and then new ideas or modification of the existing ideas takes place that is what is referred to as abstract conceptualization and then those ideas are tried out this is the stage which is referred to as active experimentation and on the basis of experiential learning cycle called 1984 provided the classification of learning styles. According to him, on the process continue, if you look at the x-axis, you will see that he tried to say on one end of the continuum are the active, is the ex active experimentation on the other end is the reflective observation. That means whether a person would like to indulge in doing, trying out the ideas or whether the person would think over the, or ponder upon the ideas. And then on the y-axis you can see the perception continuum, whether the person indulges into thinking more or he would like to have the concrete experiences that is feel about that. So four different categories emerge on the basis of this process and uh, perception. He tried to classify the learning style into four that is divergers uh, or diverging learning style, converging learning style, assimilators and then accommodators. And if you look to the characteristics of these people you will find that divergers are the one who indulge into imagination. They try to uh, find out different solution to the problem. They would like to generate large number of ideas and they would like to relate to others and they are the people who are very open-minded. When it comes to the convergers, they are the ones who try to solve the problems and use hypothetical deductive reasoning. They follow the logical steps to solving a problem. And they're very, very practical people and less emotional. And they are into physical sciences or engineering, the people who prefer. And here you find out that the other two categories are accommodators and assimilators. Accommodators are the ones who are action-oriented people. They indulge into action, they discuss, they do something, they try out ideas and then they would like to seek new experiences and they are very, very open-minded and people-oriented person. And if you look to the fourth category, these are the assimilators. Assimilators are the one who are very logical and they are systematic. They try to analyze the quantitative data and the data and would like to find out and then come to the conclusion. They are very good at building theories and they indulge in inductive reasoning. That means they have example and from variety of examples they come to the conclusion. And then they are very good as far as the research and planning activities are concerned. And the third classification was given by Felder and Silverman in 1988. And they tried to answer four questions. That is, what type of information does the student 
preferentially perceive whether the person perceives the information through senses, that is the five senses we have, or the person tries to utilize his imagination, insight, and thoughts. That is what he referred to as intuitive. The second question they raised was, what type of sensory information is most effectively perceived? Whether the person tries to prefer the visual information or the verbal information. So when they say visual information, that means the individual prefers to learn through pictures, diagrams, flowcharts, demonstration, etc. And when we say the person prefers to learn through verbal information, it may be written or spoken explanation for a concept, for a theory, and so on. Then the third question was, how does the student prefer to process information? Is he preferring the incoming information and actively engages in that information? That means either he discusses that information with others or he indulges in a physical activity by applying and see the result of that activity. Or he tries to reflect, introspect, find out the inconsistencies. So he tried to classify on the basis of processing of information into two, that is active or reflective. Then the fourth question was, how does the student characteristically progress toward understanding? Whether he follows step-by-step -step procedure, that is whether the individual is sequential, or the person tries to have an overview or jumps and understands the information without going into step-by-step -step, uh, uh, learning of the material. So that he tried to classify them into se uh, sequential and global learners. And here you can see on the basis of how the person perceives the information, the categorization is sensory versus intuitive. On the basis of what kind of input they prefer, you can classify the students into visual and verbal. On the basis of how do the individual process the information, the individuals can be classified into active and reflective. And then how do they understand whether they go step by step or logical sequencing they follow or they learn over the over uh, uh, the globally they learn. So he classified into sequential and global. So here you can see the major differences between the people who are labeled as sensing and the people who are labeled as intuitive. And here you can see the characteristic of the people which I have already enumerated that the sensing people, they learn the facts, they solve the problems by established methods, they are good at memorizing facts, they are into practical work and uh, they don't like courses that have no apparent connection to the real world. Whereas intuitors or intuitive learners, they try to discover the possibilities or relationships. They don't like repetition. They are comfortable with abstract learning of abstract concepts and mathematical formulation. They work faster and they are more innovative as compared to the sensing learners. And intuitors, they would like to uh, like the content which provides them flexibility to think beyond. That means they are not bound by the factual information or memorization of the definitions and these rules and formula. Visual and verbal learners is an apparent difference that they learn through illustrations. They prefer pictures, diagrams, flowcharts, films, etc. Whereas the verbal learners prefer written and spoken words. Active learners, they try out the things. They do indulge into discussion, apply the learned concepts, they explain it to others, they prefer group work, whereas the reflective learners, they are independent learners, they prefer to work independently, and they are more into the thinking process. And sequential learners, they follow logical steps, whereas the global learners try to understand
So uh, I'm extremely sorry because of the power failure. We, I couldn't continue. So the study was undertaken at National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research to determine the learning styles of the student pursuing master's degree program in engineering. So we have five branches of engineering and to suggest strategies for meeting diverse needs of students with different learning styles. The tool which was used included the index of learning style by Felder and Solomon. And this particular scale consists of 44 items and there are two alternatives which are to be out of the two alternatives the person has to select the one alternative which he or she thinks is most applicable to the individual and then the scoring is carried out and the individuals are classified into various learning styles active reflective sensing or intuitive visual or verbal and sequential and global Harjot. the sample for this study comprised of 175 students 32 from computer science and engineering, 30 from civil engineering, 37 from electrical engineering, 31 from electronics and communication engineering, and 45 students of mechanical engineering. And these students were administered the index of learning styles and the data was collected. And after tabulating the data, we tried to calculate the percentage of students with different learning styles. And it was observed that majority of the students from computer science and engineering, electrical engineering, electronics and communication engineering showed a very similar pattern of learning styles. The students of these three branches showed their preference to sensing learners, visual learners, and sequential learners. So a definite pattern emerged as far as these three branches were concerned. That means students of computer science and engineering, electrical engineering, and electronics and communication engineering they prefer to indulge into discussions, indulge in trying out the new ideas, new concepts, new principles. They would like to prefer group work than being working alone on the problems. The kind of information they prefer to receive is through their sensing. So they are banking upon the external information they are receiving through their five senses. They are more towards visual information rather than the verbal information. That means they prefer diagrams, pictures, video films, animations, simulations, and so on. And they don't prefer to learn the verbal information. So they would prefer uh, more of visual representation of the information as compared to the written or spoken information. With respect to sequential or global learning style, the students of these three branches again were found to be more oriented towards sequential learning style. So they prefer to solve the problem by following orderly steps and logical. So they don't jump or they don't get the overview of the information. 
with respect to the civil engineering students except for active reflective they were also found to be preferring the sense sensing style the visual style and the sequential style of learning but equal percentage of the student were found to be oriented towards active learning style and reflective learning style that means equal number of students they prefer to indulge in discussion doing the things trying out the things while equal number of students they prefer to ponder upon think up the in think through the information and reflect so in case of mechanical engineering student they were found to be more oriented towards reflective learning style rather than active learning style that means these students who are pursuing masters in mechanical engineering they they are thinkers they ponder upon they reflect back they try to find out consistencies and they would like to learn by thinking alone rather than working in groups with respect to sensing intuitive or visual and verbal sequential and global again the similar pattern which emerged for computer science and engineering for civil engineering and electrical engineering that, that was the same that they preferred to be visual learners or their visual learning style was preferred by them preferred sequential learning or they preferred to be sensing learners when we try to analyze further that how many of the students show strong preference for a particular style then it was the results were very surprising if you have a look at this slide you will uh, uh, only with respect to the visual learning style 27% of the students of computer science and engineering they showed strong preference for visual learning style others they showed slight or moderate preference for visual learning style and if it other styles of learning active reflective or it was sensing and intuitive or sequential or global majority of the students they were either they either had slight preference for the style or they had the moderate preference for this style then the civil engineering students also you can see that only 20% of the civil engineering students they showed strong preference for active learning style and about 19% of them they had strong preference for visual learning style and here you can see rest of the students they have either shown slight preference or a moderate preference for a particular learning styles likewise electrical engineering students in case of reflective learning style sensing learning style and visual learning style we had students ranging between 7% to 17% who showed strong preference for these three types of learning styles that 7% they were found to be more preferring the reflective learning styles 10% preferred sensing learning styles and 17% had strong preference for visual learning styles and in case of electronics and communication it was observed that 10% of the student each they had strong preference for sensing learning style and sequential learning style and 9% approximately they had strong preference for global learning style whereas 25% of the student who had preference for visual learning style had strong preference for the visual learning style and mechanical engineering students they out of this you can see again 34% of these students showed strong preference for visual learning styles and 7% each showed strong preference for sequential and global learning style 
and it, when we try to have the complete scenario with respect to how many students have slight preference or moderate preference or strong preference for a particular learning style we found that very few students except in the case of visual learning style had shown strong preference for a particular learning style majority of them strong uh, a slight preference or a moderate preference for a particular learning style and on the basis of this what we can conclude we can conclude that there are diverse learning styles adopted by the students of NITTTR who are pursuing their master's degree program. And in order to cater to the needs of these students, teachers need to use an appropriate mix of different instructional strategies. You will all agree with me that majority of the teachers who are working in the technical institutions in the classroom lecture method is used and lecture method doesn't help the students to develop higher level abilities it only is appropriate when we have to give factual information or we want that they should memorize and remember the information. But in case we have to cater to the needs of intuitors, we need to cater to the needs of the people who would like to have the global learning style, or we want to cater to the people who would like to try out the things, then this particular instructional strategy is inappropriate. And we need to look into, there are many, many methods, instructional methods, which allow the learners to interact among themselves, interact with the teacher, indulge into discussion, and find out solution to the problems. Maybe we, are, we can think of group discussions. We can think of uh, think, pair, and share kind of a strategy. We can think of giving them collaborative learning so that they have the experience of working in a group and finding solution to the problems where they listen to the others, they discuss the concepts, they discuss the theories, they discuss the alternatives which are there for solution to the problem. Or we use small group methods of instruction to engage the learners and try to develop among them the higher level abilities and catering to the learning styles which exist within the classroom. So engineering teaching them they provide us ample scope for inclusion of visuals. Now whether you take into account the computer science and engineering, you talk in terms of the mechanical engineering, you talk about the civil or the electronics and communication engineering, there is so much in the form of visuals which can be added to the verbal explanation. So today, when the teachers are utilizing the PowerPoint presentation, most of these PowerPoint presentations include textual material. So if we can supplement the verbal explanation with the visual a representation of that by using animations, simulations, diagrams, charts, flow diagrams, or when we are dealing with the process and we show the process how it passes through different stages and we have different stages appearing on the screen, then that visual representation becomes very easy for those people who are preferring visual learning styles and maybe the digital age in which we are living most of our youngsters they are preferring the visuals than the verbal kind of explanation so teacher can easily supplement the verbal explanation with the visual representation of that verbal explanation another important implication for the teachers is 
that the explanation which we are building, we need to cite examples where in the day-to-day -day life or the world of work, these concepts, principles, procedures are applicable. Where we can apply and where these are being used in the world of work so that a student can see the relevance of what he is learning and this will help you to cater to the needs of the learners who try to apply and see the relationship with the uh, actual world. So you are trying to help those learners who learn by looking at the relationship of the content with the world in which they are living. So this is going to help the students who are with the sen uh, sensing learning style. They are getting information and they are trying to see the application of the new material in the world of work or in the day-to-day -day life. So you can cater to the needs of sensing learning. Then in order to cater to the requirements of the students who have preference for the intuitive learning style or called intuitors, the teacher himself need to be very, very innovative and creative. Think of, can we use brainstorming in the classroom? Can we use attribute listing technique or brain writing or writing of analogies and metaphors as techniques to cater to the students who prefer to generate alternate solutions to the problem. Who can think the problem by having multiple perspectives. They don't think in one direction. They can look at the problem from multiple angles, multiple views they can have of the problem and they can generate different solutions to the problem. So one can cater to the needs of intuitors by integrating the creativity techniques of brainstorming, attribute listing, brain writing, writing of analogies and metaphors, or giving open-ended problems to the students in the classroom. So this will satisfy them and they can learn in their preferred mood. Then to maximize the learning among students who use active learning styles or who prefer active learning styles, then you should give them the opportunity to discuss the concepts, theories and techniques in groups. So if, say for example, you are dealing with the concept of machines. Now there are a number of definitions which are available. You just give them the sheet which is available, which has six, five, six definitions and let the people try to identify the common elements and discuss among the group and come out with their own definition of the machine. Maybe if your subject tries to provide that kind of opportunity to you, you can think of abundance of opportunities where you can involve your students in small group discussion. Or you allow the student to discuss the concept with the person sitting next to him and then give the suggestion. So pyramiding technique can also be used where you have the pairs, they discuss the uh, issue, concept, problem in a pair, then two pairs are joined, then four pairs are joined and ultimately you can reach a consensus in the class. So think of where the person can discuss, can you create the, those opportunity to satisfy the active learnings and then make sure whatever rules they are learning, they have the opportunity to try out those rules in a practical situation. They do something and see the effect of that uh, principle. So they validate the principle or they apply a principle in a given situation and see its effect. Then for reflective learners, what a teacher can do is you can involve your learners in reflective processes. So they have listened to you, they have seen the video presentation or so on. Now ask them to think back and come out with 
certain questions which you have raised so they need to answer those questions by reflecting on the input which has been provided by the teacher or what they have read in the book or what they have seen in the video so you give them opportunity to prepare the summary of the lecture which you have delivered or summary of the video which they have seen so what learning they has occurred or what conclusions can be arrived at uh, looking at or reading through the material or listening to the lecture so reflective learners need time so you need to give them time to reflect back you cannot expect immediate answer to the problem immediate answer to the questions but you need to give them time then in order to maximize learning among sequential learners it is important that the teacher tries to give the procedures step by step wherever you are dealing with procedures there should be clear cut this is the first step second step third step fourth step even when it comes to the problem solving wherever the logical steps are involved step by step procedure need to be demonstrated or maybe if you're dealing with the practical class then again step by step procedure need to be made clear to the learner but at the same time if there are students who prefer the global learning style then you can use advanced organizers that means you give an overview of the topic which you are going to deal with and you are going to satisfy the global learner or you give the summary at the end and the person is able to understand what has been deliberated upon so these are the students uh, who are either sequential learner so when you deal with step by step you are satisfying the sequential learner when you use advanced organizing organizers and giving an overview then you are trying to satisfy the uh, global learners so by adopting different strategies you can satisfy the different learners who are there in your classroom I think uh, it is uh, as far as the study was concerned these were the major sign uh, findings and these are not different because in psychology we say that individual differences exist among the learners and individual differences exist with respect to large number of variables so the study didn't uh, point out towards significant differences because very few of the students had a strong preference for a particular style uh, so a teacher needs to use a mix of instructional strategies as well as the media to cater to the needs of different students with varied learning styles in the class so thank you very much if you have questions then I can take up those questions for the next 10 minutes. Over to the organizers. Can, can you elaborate some real world examples that can be used to explain the concept in electronics and telecommunication engineering context? The concept. Uh, Sir, I, I am from the field of education and not from electronics. But say, for example, if you have the concept of, say, there are concrete concepts and there are abstract concepts. And if I take an example of the concrete concepts, I have a referent available to me. And for example, when you're using the routers, you are using the electronics, the word bullet, huh? television, you are talking in terms diode you are talking in so all these can be shown that means a tangible referent is available and these things can be shown to the learners so they can see and when I talk in terms of the abstract concepts so can they be simplified now when you are talking of the semiconductors now this is a concept which needs to be defined but there are a number of examples which can clarify the concept of semiconductors. So when I am giving a definition, I can show them or give examples uh, of the 
semiconductors and uh, that will satisfy the learners. Sir, any other question is there from the audience? Uh, I am waiting for the questions, ma'am. We will just give one or two minutes. Okay. What was the sample size of your study? So there were uh, one seventy five students belonging to the five major disciplines of civil computer science, electrical engineering, electronics and communication and mechanical engineering. I had only taken the students who were pursuing master's degree at National Institute of Technical Teachers Training and Research. So this was a limitation of the study that I cannot generalize the findings for the wider population. So there are no further questions, ma'am. Thank you very much for the webinar. Thank for the, sorry for the disturbance today. Yeah, no problem, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.